welcome to this video. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. My name is Janie and you're watching the Maker Jane channel where I share all things English paper piecing from tips and tutorials to projects and more. So if you love EPP like I do, please consider subscribing. In this video, I'm going to show you how to plan an EPP temperature quill in just three simple steps. By the end of this video, you'll know the exact steps to take to begin planning your temperature quilt with confidence. To go along with this video, I've also written a blog post that goes into a lot more detail than what I'll be able to cover in today's video, including recommended fabric bundles and pattern designs. So when you're done with this video, be sure to check out the link down below in the description. I've also created something very special for you, the Ultimate EPP Temperature Quilt Starter Kit. And yes, it is a kit. It's got everything you need to start planning and making your EPP temperature quilt, including planner pages with charts, templates, and coloring pages. It's a free download, so just click the link in the description. Before we get into the three steps to planning your temperature quilt, let's talk a little bit about what a temperature quilt is. A temperature quilt is a quilt that's made to document the daily high and low temperatures of a given location over a period of time. A temperature quilt can be made with any quilting technique that you can imagine from traditional piecing to English paper piecing. So in this video, I'm specifically focused on English paper piecing, but really these three steps that I'm gonna give you can apply to any type of quilting. So even if you are not an English paper piecer, you can still follow these same three steps to make your temperature quilt. So why make a video about planning a temperature quilt? Well, temperature quilts require more planning than your typical quilt. Each temperature or range of temperatures is going to be represented by a specific fabric that is a specific color. And in order to keep track of all of this, we need to have a place where we can have a key of sorts, a fabric key or a color key, and we need a place where we can log all of that information. So in that starter kit that I mentioned earlier, you're gonna find the charts and the planner pages that you need to log that information. That's why I put that together for you so that you wouldn't have to create it yourself. So let's get into the three steps to planning your EPP temperature quilt. So the first step is to start logging and tracking the data. In order to do this, you're going to need some sort of organizational system. And that's why I created the starter kit that's got the planner in it. So remember to download that planner if you would like to use that. I've already created the planner sheet and all the charts. So all you have to do is fill in the information. The items that you'll need to fill in on your planner are, first of all, the location of where you're going to be documenting the, the temperatures. You can document where you live. You could document maybe a special location uh, from childhood. Um, you could document your favorite vacation spot. The location doesn't matter. It's completely customizable to you and what you want to document. Once you have the location selected, then you need to determine the amount of time that you want to document. So the cool thing about temperature quilts is you can document the present or you can document the past. Most temperature quilts typically document about a year's worth of daily high and low temperatures. But really, the length of time that you document is up to you. You could document a week, you could document a month, you could document a year, you could document five years. It really is up to you, but you need to make that decision and then you need to write that into your planner. The next thing that you need to start writing onto your planner is the total range of temperatures for that given location. This is going to also coincide with the length of time that you're documenting. So if you're only documenting a week, you need to decide what week out of the entire year you wanna document. You're going to need a lot less fabrics and you won't have as wide a range of temperatures for that short of a time period. The longer the time period you go, a whole year, is going to require more fabrics because there is a whole range of temperatures within that year. And you're actually going from the extreme lowest temperature all the way to the extreme highest temperature and back again. 
So really, a year's worth of temperatures is a good time frame to start documenting and logging into your planner. So just a quick review. The first step in planning your temperature quilt is to create a planner and start writing in the information. The information you're going to need is the location, the time period, and the total temperature range of that location for that time period. Once you've got that information, then you can start actually logging the daily temperatures for that location. The second step in planning your temperature quilt is to choose your fabrics. Choosing your fabrics is going to depend on the location and that total temperature range for that location. And it depends on the length of time that you're documenting as well. So it's really important that you do step one first before you move to step two and start looking at fabrics and choosing fabrics. Because all the information that you collect in step number one is going to determine how many fabrics you're going to need for your temperature quilt. They tend to be more beautiful and more dynamic when there are more fabric choices for that quilt. In other words, the more fabrics you have in a temperature quilt and the more range of color that you have in a temperature quilt, the more interesting the temperature quilt is typically. Once you've chosen your fabrics, then you can start adding those fabrics to your color chart. And your color chart is going to be your key that you're going to refer to throughout the entire period of time that you're making your temperature quilt. As you make your temperature quilt, you'll be cutting your fabrics and you'll need to refer to this color chart so that you know which fabrics to select for any given day. So now that you have started logging your data and putting that into a planner of some sort, and you have chosen your fabrics, you know how many fabrics you need from the data that you've been collecting, and you've chosen your fabrics, the third and final step in planning your temperature quilt is to choose a pattern. It's important to predetermine the quilt pattern design for your temperature quilt because it's going to determine the final size of your quilt and it's also going to determine how much fabric you're going to need. I don't know about you, but when I did a search for temperature quilt online, there were so many different pattern ideas and options out there. Now, most temperature quilts are made using a two fabric or two color block system. So each block in the quilt is made using two different fabrics, one fabric for the high temperature and one fabric for the low temperature. The templates that I've included in the Temperature Quilt Starter Kit were designed with this in mind. So they are a two fabric or two color block. Now, if you wanted to document more than just the high and low temperatures, you could also document weather events like rain, snow, fog, hail, things like that. But for that, you're going to kind of need to rethink or think a little bit further about the types of blocks that you want to use that will incorporate those other aspects of the weather. Check out the blog for more details on how to design your own temperature quilt using the free templates included in the starter kit. I've also got details there that will help you to resize your temperature quilt as well. We've covered quite a lot in this video, so go ahead and pause, rewind, and rewatch if you need to. I've also got each of the chapters down below in the description, so if there's one particular thing that you had a question on, you can go to the description and look for that subject and click on the timestamp, and it'll take you right to that spot in the video without you having to search for it. We talked about what a temperature quilt is. We also talked about why you need to pre-plan a temperature quilt. And then we went over the three steps to actually planning a temperature quilt. Number one, to start tracking your information. Step number two was to choose your fabrics for your temperature quilt. And step number three is to select a pattern design. I've created the ultimate EPP temperature quilt starter kit to help you get started planning and creating your own EPP temperature quilt. 
And I've got the blog post for you as well that goes into a lot more detail than what I was able to cover in today's video. So be sure to check out the links in the description for both the blog post and the starter kit. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below and let me know, will you be making a temperature quilt this year? Or do you see yourself making one in the future? I'd love to know. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, keep on stitching.